So I got some small lamps on line. Uh, these, I'm gonna not actually put these ones here, but uh, it's just an example. I'm gonna use the ones that's actually currently on the cab, the, the larger the, of the other ones. And I'm gonna put them here in the center to give me plenty of light down around this area. I find I have a lot of uh, dark spots close, close to the machine and far away. And I find light bars are very good, but I find they're only, well, I mean, a cab mounted light bar is good, but it, it only focuses light in one area. So you're kind of limited unless you put in plenty more lamps. So I decided to go with the, the lamp setup that I have plenty of lamps that I can direct them exactly the way I want. These are only small exhaust clamps and I'll modify these to suit. that I'll just take a small bit off them or whatever off the threads. So as you can see, it's just, the nut is just screwed on. It's just an easy way of mounting the lights without going too much trouble. These here are currently mounted in that kind of similar kind of way. These are the ones I'm gonna take off and put them down in the, in the center of the machine. And I have four, four of these new ones. So I'm gonna put four of these, these smaller ones across the top here. And uh, I haven't got anything to replace these or anything yet, but I'm gonna to wanna to see how these all go. The four new ones are those small ones. And then when these ones are down the bottom, it's probably gonna make a huge difference. So we're gonna do a bit of wiring on these. We're gonna uh, take the, uh, put the, uh, put plugs and everything on them and I'll make a whole complete loom for these and I'm going to use ferrite chokes and everything to try and avoid them interfering with the with the radio because the they tend to tend to make a lot of interference whenever you're trying to listen to the radio so I'll uh, make these exact to exact length to what I want uh, and just literally have the loom coming along that all the sockets are there and we just plug these in so um, yeah we'll do that now Okay, so what I have here is ferrite chokes. So these these here are, are designed to stop interference from the from these LEDs because the transformer in these and the the circuitry and electronics cause interference. And when you try to put on your radio, whenever these are on, sometimes it uh, there's too much interference to listen to it. So I picked out the ones that I need. I need. I bought a couple of bags of these because I had a few jobs for them. I have other lights on, on that that are causing trouble as well. But they're all different sizes. So you get a pack with a selection. They're not expensive. I can't remember how much they were, but they're very cheap. So sort of about maybe, I think it's only six quid for a pack or something like that. So that's the plan with them. I'm just giving you examples. Some smaller ones, some bigger ones. I've picked out the one for the size of this cable. So we just put that on the cable and we snap them around and tighten them. And it helps stop the interference coming back down the line and affecting everything on the machine. So my other thing that I'm going to do is put these on to every single one of these. So leave these plug plug and play. So that leaves the, if there's anything wrong with one of them, it's gonna be easy to change it. I have loads of these. I have an extra bag of these. So I'm going to uh, terminate these off. Uh, this is a glue type heat shrink. So I'm gonna put this glue heat shrink over the that one's not gonna fill in that one, but I have more of this bigger stuff. I'm gonna put that over, over them to seal these completely back to the cable so this nice snug fit because the biggest problem is with these usually with them getting wet and uh, then they stop working, obviously. So I'm gonna use a small piece of this to, to build it up and then I'm gonna use a piece of this. So this here, is that actually, is that closed in? But unfortunately, it doesn't close tight enough for the for the actual cable. Now, as you can see, I'm after sticking that together with my fingers. You can see the glue. Now, this stuff is brilliant for sealing anywhere around any cables. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put a little. Uh, it's it won't it won't seal properly on this because it's a little bit too big. But if I put a small bit of that on first and then put this on, it'll seal. So I'm gonna cut these pieces up for this. Slide them all on, and then I'll do the plugs. A lot of people would actually uh, wire these up and actually keep these all 
just just tie these into a loom like and solder them in but that's fine but if anything goes wrong with one of the lamps it's going to be really easy to unplug or take it off just stick a new plug on it and put it back on whereas you're going to have to start messing with wiring probably cut wiring and just have a mess so i just rather i rather do it this way especially for these fittings it's going to have to go here probably just like something like that there this one will back it up, this one will come right up to the plug, so put um, I won't work out how much I needed this, which isn't a lot. Cut it leaves enough that it's, it's obviously not going to be too short or too long. Let's put that in here. See, it's in the it's in the crimping tool. First cut wire in here. Try to, hopefully. Just keep an eye on the other side. They are a little bit temperamental, and if you're not careful, it really won't work out. That one worked well. So you can see, you might, might be able to see I've just some cores just showing the other side of this crimp and that there's the insulation is underneath the, the yellow seal so as they call them a super seal so that little yellow one will seal that in there so I'm just going to crimp, crimp the other one it's exactly the same but this one and, uh, and then I'll put the slot the two of them into the plug I'll have to decide which side I go with which so from left to right, but looking at it this way from the back of the plug, I would say we have one and two. So I might go with the red and black that direction there. Yeah, from looking at it this way. But number one is red. Push these down into the plug. You should seal. They should click into place and seal. This is a wee extra tail lock on that we put on at the end. That's it. They're all tightened in. And of course, always give a little check, a little tug on them to make sure that they're tight. And I'll take note of what color is which. I'll just take a picture of the color scheme and the numbering. Because when I cover this, I won't see it. So. Obviously that, that heat shrink didn't fit on that, so that's what I was trying to achieve by putting that there first and putting this one over. This one will flows on the end of the plug, keep everything nice and tight. Gentle heat. Gently heat the tip of him slightly, get him warmed up. And then moving up. This 
position. Try and heat it nice and evenly. All the way around. I'm also trying to be very careful not to melt, melt the actual plug. It might actually be an idea to take the seal off it because I'm probably going to burn it. Just take the seal off temporarily. And get it heated in. Does create quite a bit of heat, so okay. so on the socket side, which will be this. This will clip in here like that, and that'll be part of the loom that side. So the loom that runs out for all the lights, this will run down nice, nicely. Same as the mall, we'll do them all like this, and then loom them all in to the main loom. So only getting back to this now after a good while. So as you can see, I've got these kind of all mounted up. Happy enough with the way they sit. They're all sitting pretty pretty proud anyway. So the way I'm gonna walk this is, let's just try and get this set up here now. So obviously these are the sockets for every light. You plug in your socket. For example, if I put two of those on. So I'm gonna make a loom now to pick these up. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to keep my cable here. I'll tie the cable down now. Same there. But I want to keep it clear of the sunroof. I want the sunroof to be able to open without any, it impeding it. So I'm just going to keep a small loop like this here. Back in each one. And they're all going to be the same. So they're all exact same length. So what I'm left with here then is a measurement from... I can go by the ends of the plugs or I can go to the up here. I'm probably going to go up to the front because to leave the extra little bit on the cables whenever I cut them. From there to the beginning of the next one is 130 mil, 130 millimeters or five inches. So they're all going to be five inches apart right across. So I'm going to have four plugs five inches apart on the loom. So this will be your end of loom and then you'll have uh, one, two, three. And then I'm going to feed it down the bottom and I'm going to pick up the other lights on the bottom as well. Um, I might need provision for another light here in the future as well. Um, I might put a light on the back. So I might, I might put that on the other side of the loom. So I'm going to go and build that now. So in relation to my colours, as you can see, I've taken the photo two and one. So I know what, what goes into each side of the plug. So I can't go wrong and mix the positives and negatives up. And I'm building the sockets. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to strip these here. And I'll get some of this lighter cable just to run to the light. Just to run, to run to the socket. And I'm going to put that in there. And I'm going to solder it to the cable. Now there is inline crimps for this job. But I don't have any so. I'm going to go this way. And I will solder those in like so. I'll slide a bit of heat shrink up over it. And I'll seal them. So once they're soldered in, they can tee off to each plug. Uh, like so. And I'm going to do the same with the black. So I can get some light black cable like this here. Nice, small, it's easy to use and stuff that suits, suits these perfectly.
So as you can see, with most of this together now, it's all kind of uh, mostly there for, except for taping now. So this is uh, Super 33 Plus. So it this is made for indoor and outdoor use, and it'll do up to 105 degrees C or 20, 221 degrees Fahrenheit, and down to minus 18 degrees C's. So or zero Fahrenheit. So, um, they. The idea of this is obviously it's ideal for outdoor use and it's ideal for um ideal for you see it won't break down with the weather because so this this will always be out in the weather so i'm just going to wrap up a uh, bit bit by bit and try and close this all in nice and neatly so that i'm uh, nearly there then for that stage i have to do the lower side i have two lights to pick up on the lower side but as you can see what i've done is i've used i've used little uh tails to feed off the two main your two uh your two main lanes so you have your main positive and negative lane running up and then you can tee off from that wherever you like so that will leave me with a uh, room for future i can always pick up pick up the the negative wherever i feel like uh, if i want to add another light and just run another small cable i ran fairly decent cable for these lights because there's actually going to be good fuel on this circuit and it avoids any uh, pressure on the system um any overcurrent on the cable and stuff like that. The design will be like so. Run around here. I'll try to get that neatly tidied in now. Got the whole thing, so I'll probably I'll probably try and tie that nice and neatly in behind the lights right along. It's not ideal because I want to be able to open the sunroof and uh, they were kind of in the way, so so we'll just get that tied down along, as I said, down along here, and I'm gonna leave it the, having having the negative run in the in the cable leaves, I want to put a I want to put a rear walk light here, something that I can switch on and off, that I can turn on at night if I need, and I probably end up putting a, a rear view camera on it. So I want also to be able to have that ability to do so. So and uh, we we'll have to run down here and around and pick up the main power source, source which is here, which we'll be going from which is on the main switch for the, the main lights. So we'll pick that up and then we have the two two new lights. Other two new lights to be fitted down here. So they're sitting waiting ready to go. So we'll get the loom run across to them as well. We make two new tails into the main loom, this new loom, and we'll have them So just uh, so just a preliminary kind of bit of a tie up. All the lights are now tied up. I moved the chokes on them as well because they were kind of some of them were in the way. I sh shifted them up a little bit. Um, so the the loom sitting exactly where I wanted. Only I'll, I'll obviously tie it in a bit tidier and neater. Get it tied down nice and tight, and uh, it'll run down along here, just nice and nice and sweetly down along the edge of the cab. And I'll use some of the little sticky pads. I'll clean off this here and try and get them stuck on. Might stick a little bit of uh, Tech 7 with them as well to stop them tearing off because they do they do break off after a while. The weather gets them. They're not designed for outside, but um, that's obviously of course instead of doing any major um, bracketry or anything like that, we'll make it, we'll make it work. Um, yeah, so we'll uh, we'll take the loom back off now in a minute whenever I get uh, a measure for where the next one has to be and then uh, we'll get them added in and once everything's added on at least I can lift the loom over put it on the only connection I'll have to work on is maybe down here on uh, the main on the main uh, side of things I will work that out as I go I'm not still not unsure as to what way I'm going to join that but I'm thinking uh, something like what's on it male female spade or I might use uh, even a bullet connections there and uh, I might use a little bit of copper grease on one of those and uh, try it and see what it work. 
see can I get the cable into it it might be a better solution and my negative I'm gonna have to pull to a ground which probably will be in the cab I'll try and get that into the back down the very bottom you may not be able to see it from here but I'm gonna try and get that down into where the main loom and that comes out of the cab and into a dry ground in internally in the cab so you're guaranteed there all is a good ground uh, so you have no issues like that so if you ever have any issues you know that's one thing eliminated which is usually a big problem whereas obviously this worked for a good while and it's not a bad it's not a bad ground but they, they do over time guarantee the rust out and uh, yeah they just cause trouble so your light stop working you also create uh, extra load then as well when you have bad connections you have high resistance and you blow fuses and etc you do plenty of other different things but anyway so uh, we'll go from there now so underneath the cab is where I'm going to take the earth to, or the ground. So we have a ground point here that I've actually already taken the bolt out of. And I put a wee wire through. Hopefully it's nice to follow me. Yeah, there we go. So that's the ground coming through now. There we go. We'll put it on there and that's all. We'll do the rest then. So the finishing product, we have all lights working. I'm gonna probably replace this one up here, and this one here as well in the future because they're obviously, they don't match in, but uh, they're light, they work. So uh, that's the finish of that in there. That's, I just crimped that to that, put some copper grease in the crimp to make sure that it wouldn't corrode. Um, the loom in here, so these lights here are all just all nice and tied up just tied this coming down and around here and wise off ways off for this one here and down in through the belly this is where my main power source is here the, the loom I brought it up in here and joined it as the power source it runs down in there and along up here picks up some cables picks up another couple of cables for here I ran actually a spare here and it was here tied it nice and neatly to all the all the little clamps here along and uh, it goes along here put a couple of ties on it just hold it there and everything it's pretty good i'll be pretty confident with that now that should that would never give any trouble because everything's sealed everything's glue joints so if uh, one of these seals and these two were to fail maybe that would be about the only thing that could happen really so yeah happy out so that's that sunroof is still up you can still open the sunroof now whereas originally you couldn't because the the loom kept coming in on the edge of it and, but uh, if you were to do this another way you could probably run your loom through this bar which would be another option um, leave your plugs out but take a little bit more work but not major but yeah no i'm happy with that i'll do the trick so uh plenty more jobs to do